Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Ugh. <laughs> Really, that's how we're starting. This is a uh, this is a good morning, Lori Kilmartin. Morning, yeah, it's eight a.m. on a Wednesday. <laughs> on, on a Wednesday, my day off. On your day off, it's true. Yeah, it's true. You've been going for weeks, so have I. Yeah, I'm ready to fall over in a heap. But here we are. We're back here. in the tomb. This is it. We're back in the cave with Kyle. Back in the tomb with Kyle. Kyle is for lovers, you guys. That was the hashtag I tried to we, start. <laughs> <laughs> we did miss you, Kyle. Oh, I missed you guys, too. Yeah. Uh, we were in New York forever. It was just um, a week, but it felt like forever. It did, because uh, this is what I realized. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is going to sound judgmental, Lori mm-hmm. Martin, because it is. Yeah. Uh, the three, four sets a night you do yeah. are cakewalk compared to me crawling around Queens and Brooklyn and back to Manhattan. Oh, that's ridiculous. Your your schedule was insane. Yeah, I felt like you I didn't was allot like, yourself enough time between spots. Right, I ended up missing you're not a in Manhattan where it's easy to get around. You were Right, I You're in a a borough, an outer borough. I was doing sets in outer boroughs. I was staying at a Hampton Inn on 43rd and 2nd Avenue. And then I did a set in the Hamptons, and I tried to make it funny for the people in the Hamptons that I was staying at a Hampton Inn. <laughs> and guess what? They didn't know what they a Hampton didn't enjoy was. It. <laughs> Hampton Inn. For the for the 1% listening, uh, the Hampton Inn is there a There might low... be a Hamptons Inn in the Hamptons. How was that gig? That sounded fun. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. It was it was very funny because um, – and I – but I, I mean I had a lovely time. Judah You're Friedlander opening for was Judah Friedlander. Yeah, yeah, and we stayed. And when he told me, he said, oh, uh, I think we were on the train when he was telling me, yeah, we're all staying in this guest house. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it's been established what I think about f- – Fucking right. not staying in a hotel. Right. Um, so I was like, wait, what? And he said, I know, I know, but there's, it's supposedly a really big, right next to the theater guest house, and everybody has their own room. And I said, who's everybody? Just me <laughs> and you? And he goes, no, there's three other comics on the first show. Oh, my God. Hold I'm getting a Kleenex from oh, right across it. from... Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll pass I didn't it. want to sniffle. Don't Wait, sniffle. there's there was two shows. Two and you shows. Were doing both of them? No, no. There was a there was so, there was something run by Caroline's who, who ran the first show. Okay. With three very funny people. I have forgotten their names. Of Why wouldn't I have? Yeah. And then uh, and then Judah and I did the second show, and the first show was full, and the second show because it's full of uh, the elderly uh, was more lightly attended, even uh. though every like. Every young person that had ever heard of Judah Friedlander was there. Oh, so there was cool. like 12, 20, maybe 18 to 25 kids. Oh, like, you must have some hardcore fans. He, yeah. Oh, and and then the rest of it were just uh, sort of middle-aged people that had wandered in uh, yeah. to see theater. Not knowing that they <laughs> were Was the Hamptons comedy. having a comedy festival? Why did two different entities produce a show at the same uh, venue? Well, they, they've just, this is a beautiful theater. Holy crap. This the, Of course, as you can imagine, it was so beautiful. And the woman who, who ran us around was the nicest lady in the world. But they're thinking about doing more comedy. And so they had had Tom Papa on the week, uh, the month before. Yeah. They'd had Jim Gaffigan. So and, real alt. <laughs> right, super alt. And then, <laughs> and then the next thing they decided was Judah Friedlander. <laughs> And then Judah saw that I was in town on Twitter, and he said, "Do you want to make uh, some money?" And I said, "Yeah, I do." That's cool. Really that reminds me of the, my story from a, like a week or two ago, where uh, the woman had seen Jay Leno on television at, at the at the Mormon Woman and Nordstroms oh. in Alaska, and wanted oh. me to tell Jay Leno jokes. Like, see, oh my god! Like they it booked just... Papa and the Gap again, <laughs> and now they're going to start booking every comic in New York. And be like, wait, what's happening? What just happened? <laughs> Is that Kurt Metzger? And uh, there oh, you go. I love Kurt Metzger. <laughs> Kurt He's Metzger's so hilarious. Hilarious. He is hilarious. He is. But we were just saying that when Kurt Metzger is your hero, in a, uh, you uh, th- it's, in a a <laughs> in a, it's a mess. In a story. In a story, it's always a mess. So. Well, now you have to tell the whole story. You can't just drop that and run. 
Google Kurt Metzger no, and you will find don't. every rant. No, 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 no. You can't just, no. You okay. can't. You, oh, wow. All right, Bossy Magoo. Let's do it. All right. So here's, uh, so on Friday night, I get uh, I get back from New York a week ago, right? Right. So on Friday night, t- somebody tagged me, a perfectly nice comic, yeah. perfectly nice human being, whatever, tagged me on a post on Facebook and said, hey, this guy, and I'm not going to name him because there is been no due process right there's been no accusations no nothing public not even a mediator hired by ucb or the creek in the cave to mediate with the people who have accused this guy yeah a a comic has been accused of raping other multiple people yes right and raping or sexually assaulting we don't even know if it's full-on whatever it is but it's horrible and it and it and it and i would commend the UCB in Creek in a Cave for going, oh, well, this this is not going to be acceptable. We're going to ban this guy. That sounds great, except for that you also have to do due process. Yeah. I will line up. I, well, yeah, before. I'll pull the trigger, but I just, you, I need to have some information. You I don't know. know. I, don't, I have the whole story. But it, yeah, okay. it, I do think there's a, there's, you know, a closed social media group where women were warning each other, which I'm fine with. Yeah, please. <laughs> don't get it. You know, please. don't be in an elevator with this guy. Right. Or whatever. And naming him in this closed group. Now, I didn't see any of that. I went. Oh, am I, I wrong then? Well, what I got was this is what I got. I got from the comic uh, who is not uh, an LA comic post tagged me on a post that said this guy's been banned from UCB, uh, and if you and it was clipped. It was a screenshot of someone else's post. Okay. And it said, if you got any questions, email Marissa at UCB Theater. And it, so it sounded like sort of a professionally kind of thing put out by UCB. And so I, I, I on that thread, said, what the hell, Paul? Why, uh, why am I tagged on this? He was like, well, because you did two of his gigs last week in New York. And I said, okay, well, I had to actually cancel one of those. And then I weeded <laughs> it off into so stand-up So he raped comedy. you in a way. He raped, well, I raped him in, in, in sort of a, because I didn't show up to do the sets. And so, Oh, the, hey, high five. What, well, I couldn't do it because I'm... Pro- cause justice the, has been served. <laughs> that'll show him, <laughs> except for that. And he doesn't seem to be, I, like, I don't know anything about the guy. He just booked me on a couple of things. He yeah. looks like yet another member of the Bearded Youth Movement. Right. And he's been doing stand-up for like 10 years. Right. So, um, and he's got these two rooms that he runs. So then I'm looking around. I'm calling a comics. I'm like, am I supposed to hate this guy? What's happening? Right? Please tell me. And no one can tell me. And so then I go to his page because we're connected because of the booking. Yeah. And he has posted a thing that says, hey, um, I would just like to state for the record that to my knowledge, I have not sexually assaulted or raped anyone. But I don't want to belittle what has been, I don't want to belittle anyone's experience, what they think has happened. But what you should know is that I have not been confronted by my accusers, not even uh, – I've just been banned without even a hearing at UCB. And he said – and in his post, he also said, if I get a hearing – I've, I've asked for a hearing and I've asked to challenge this. If I can clear my name, I want everyone to remember that I, I don't – I didn't do this. And so – because he said, my life is genuinely being ruined at this point. And it reminded me – when I first moved, when um, when a friend of mine first, and I will not name his name, because guess what? This comic doesn't ever think that this is funny. This is a different story. Okay. Uh, Fifteen years ago, this comic uh, moved here uh, from the Midwest, and he was looking for a job all day long. And then he called me. I was living in a, in a, in a small apartment, and he said, and right across the street from my apartment, there was an adult day school. And then around the corner, there was a grade school. And he said, hey, uh, do you want to go to open mics together uh, after I do all my job interviews? And I said, I still had a day job at the time. And I said, yeah, I get back from my day job at 630. And he goes, okay, well, I'll meet you in front of your house, in front of your apartment. And so I was like, what he did was he, after his interviews, parked in front of my apartment, changed his clothes in his car and got arrested for pedophilia. (laughs) Which... Sure. <laughs> Funny now, but it cost him thousands and thousands of dollars. Oh, my God. And he's not allowed to substitute teach as to supplement his income. Oh. And the woman who but accused him. But he can Uber. Him, I mean. Um, well, probably. Yes. But uh, <laughs> so he. Uh, as, as long as you can Uber, you're okay. <laughs> well, and. He, but I got interviewed by some uh, – the city sent like some – some like the the prosecution yeah. sent uh, a, someone to interview me and they said, well, he put you down as a someone to vouch for his, his character. And I said, yeah, guy's not a pedophile. 
He's fine. <laughs> and, and they go, well, he's a little weird. Don't you think he's a little weird? And I was like, he's a comic. Yeah, he's a little weird. Sure. We're all a little weird. Yeah. He's not, he, but he's not a, a creepo. And um, so, but by the way, he will never find that story funny. You got to write down the name. I got to know. Well, you don't know. That's fine. I'll, it's I'll a, look him up. Okay, there you go. He's very, very funny. Um, but, Couldn't but back buy a to brick. Your, yeah, back. but back to Kurt Metzger. So Kurt Metzger. Couldn't buy a brick, you said? Brick. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought can, it was some weird Milwaukee brick. phrase. What? Well, it's, a, it's a Milwaukee comedy <laughs> phrase. Comes out of the <laughs> comes okay. out of the old comedy so back, corner. Back, back, but back. So, so this guy is 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 accused, but but much like, but but not, no charges and right. and no and not even a hearing and not yeah. even a third party mediation mediation to go what the fuck yeah and so and I can't get any answers and then all of a sudden. Over the weekend, while I'm looking around for answers and I'm trying to figure out, and I and I've asked in my secret lady group on yeah. Facebook, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to crucify this guy? Or am I supposed to wait? Um, Kurt Metzger weighs in <laughs> 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 because Kurt Metzger is Kurt Metzger, who, by the way, Kurt Metzger is a great comic, and a he's great. a writer on Amy Schumer, and, Emmy winner. He's really funny and a button pusher par extraordinaire. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, he has so, a podcast with Sherrod, uh Race Wars. Yes, uh, yeah, Sherrod Small called Race and Wars. So, but but and and the thing he and he said exactly what I just said, which yeah. is that there's been no due process. Yeah. And but he said it in, in a way to uh, really annoy. <laughs> to really, he's just like, is there a way I could pour salt, <laughs> open that wound back up, pour salt on it? Right. And he's not making fun of anyone who's been who's right. been raped, no. but it feels like he is. <laughs> Is you, that something? If you read it fast. <laughs> if, you if you read, read it fast. If you skim it. If yes, you skim you it, you're like, oh, does he hate people? You can't yes. skim a Metzger. But he doesn't. You can't skim a Metzger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but that's what that's I, what I said he, he reminds me of uh, the ACLU when they defend the KKK's right to have a yes. parade. You're like, oh, I guess you're I right. I get it. Stop you can, saying it so loudly. <laughs> right. Here's my $100 a year. Stop talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, quietly but, but, do it uh it's so i i do think it's extra horrifying when it's within a community when when a rape like that happens when it's with when it's soldier on soldier or comic on comic like we're all part of the same team yeah it's us versus the audience <laughs> and so <laughs> we won't rape anyone we rape the audience please remember that <laughs> We're well, we're together. We're we're a fighting unit, and so uh, when one of us turns on the other, you know, uh, <laughs> sure we could stab each other in the back professionally. Yes, that's part of being <laughs> well, a that's comic. part of the game. You don't fucking it's a, physically assault, right? Somebody. You don't touch somebody when they don't want to be touched. Right. It's, but and the thing, it someone mentioned it in. I think I was just sitting around, standing around with comics talking about it. Yeah. And how big of a relief that this is happening on the East Coast. We've uh, had our, we've had so many here on the West Coast where yeah. we keep poking each other, and uh, <laughs> what we're hoping now is to spread it out. But some someone at at, at one of the shows I was doing was saying how. This has been happening in every other business, like every other entertainment business. And it's yeah. n- just now is it starting to sort of be addressed because they're like, who thought that nerd comics could ha- sexually harass each other? Right. Well, I guess it can happen because <laughs> we're all such piles of insecurity that if there's one, not even alpha, just a beta dude who. Well, <laughs> they are, I mean, they're. The more comics you have, the higher the odds one of them's going to be a rapist. Yeah. Right. And, well, it's like, what did somebody did some. Oh, J.F. Harris does this joke about how one out of every three women has had an abortion. Yeah. So if you're sitting with your. If you didn't like that joke and you're sitting with your aunt, mother, or sister, you probably offended somebody. And, <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, there's. And in no way, shape, or form am I condoning letting this guy get away with it but there's if he did it yeah let us please is it, well, this is still a democratic you know, republic at least till november it right? is interesting to me this is just a general comment where guys get very upset about the potential of being falsely accused of rape which sure you should but the, it's such the percentage it, the odds are so low mm-hmm. that that's yeah gonna happen so like and a, the, a if everyone can cite percentage. their one buddy it happens it's like okay but Right. Usually, ninety nine percent of the time, the women don't come forward because they're ashamed, embarrassed, right. et cetera, et cetera. And so, 
We don't live in the crucible. Yeah. It's but, and, but there uh, it's always the one time that hap- it was someone was false cuz that's that's always which I, I mean I understand. I'm the it, mother of a son. Like a right. part of me is like, "Oh god, I wouldn't right. I would, you'd, you'd yeah. want to protect him too." Yes. But and the weird thing is is what where, do we throw this guy under the bus because it happens so rarely that anyone would not have all the information or that it might not be true? No, that's why we have due process yeah. is so that yeah. we we don't just throw this guy under the bus. We yeah. figure out what the hell frickin' happened so that we we can crucify him for real. Or, I mean, yeah, I think everyone knows <laughs> that if you are a sexual Jackie doesn't like you. I, uh, I'm, I'm willing to be all in your face about, hey, you're a jerk. Well, so, you know, our, take a uh, stand, Jackie. Our our <laughs> candidate's uh, husband has been accused of the same crime. Right, mostly false. I have been said that thing from Snopes any number of times. The accusations she, aren't. I no, mean, the accusations are real. Yeah, yeah, and the and the stories were told, and I mean, I. I you know, she's, without enough information, I know. It's do you just, want? It's do you just, want to have opinions? I can have opinions without all the information right, I know. all day long. It's just all. It's all. All day long, I can have opinions about R- Bill Clinton. Is he the kind of guy? I don't know that he's a rapist, but I think he's the kind of guy that would be a date rapist, maybe. Definitely. Like he's the pressure kind of guy. Now, like, if I don't come, there, I'm going to die. Some people would say that's the same thing. Yes, and and by definition, it's it's so close that it is. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Let there be let there be a poignant silence. <laughs> but that's why I wasn't going to bring it up, and then I accidentally made a Kurt yeah, you did. reference. I know you're, you're you're the one that said you weren't going to bring it up, and then you dropped Kurt in. Do you want to? Uh, here's a cheerful here's a cheerful question for you. Right. What is because I was thinking about this the other day when yeah. I moved to Minneapolis. I met a comic who made one of the dumbest decisions, thinking that it was going to help her career. Right. Have what is the dumbest? Think about the dumbest thing that you've Sleeping ever witnessed. Sleeping with a booker. Sleeping with a booker. Right. She slept with the sound guy at open mic. Oh my god! But did he give her an extra minute? I don't know when he flipped the. I don't know if he she she ran the light and he never checked. I it might have might have happened. Might have happened. See, early in got- your career, that might be the time <laughs> to do it. You need stage time, sister. <laughs> <laughs> but it always felt like the dumbest. I was like, that might be the dumbest thing I've ever witnessed someone do. You know, for career. I, I don't want to sound like I'm. This might come across as slamming some people that I'm close to or friends with, but. But, you know, the, uh, wow, what a coincidence that you fell in love with the Booker of Comedy Club. <laughs> Amazing coincidence. <laughs> of all the people in the world to love. <laughs> That's cool. Congratulations. You fell in love with the guy who owns Yuck Yucks? <laughs> <laughs> that guy? Eight weeks a year? Wow. Awesome. That's, that's cool. You can't, you can't stop love, Jackie. It happens when it happens. And if accidentally you <laughs> fall in love with someone who can give you what you need, that's great. That's great. <laughs> that's cool. And what he coincidentally coincidence. thinks you're the best comedian. Right. What? And uh. gives you all the female spots. Congratulations. <laughs> How did it happen? That's How cool. Did I'll work did the you... B clubs. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. It's, uh... Oh, my God. So I'm talking to my dad. Uh, this week. This is the other funny... Uh, my father sometimes is the hero of the story, and I'm pleased to tell you this one, mm-hmm. where I was telling him about a couple of comics were talking about a sort of BC weekend rooms in Wyoming and Montana, and uh, a friend of mine, she said... Well, um, isn't even an A room in Wyoming or Montana considered a C room? Kind of. Okay. And uh, and so she was being put up at a Super 8. Okay. And uh, Super 8, they don't have a foyer. There's, uh, you're parked right in front of your door, maybe. That's hopefully. right. Yeah. And, uh, that's and good. That's a good, quick getaway. That's a good getaway. <laughs> so she pulls up and it is, you know, it's all, it, it's just on a, on a highway. There's tumbleweeds. It looks like a great place to lose a body. Yeah. And this, the room next to hers, the window is cracked. Like it's got a hole right. in the window and stuff. And she, and so she calls the booker and she says, yeah, no. No, I'm not staying in this hellhole. And um and it's not going to be safe. And the booker goes, "Well, Harry McRoadtown uh last week t- didn't have a problem with it. He didn't bitch about it." And she goes, "Yeah, he's not a woman who's coming back at one o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night uh to a bunch of, you know, just dudes partying." Uh, at a motel because they all pitched in and found $70. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> so, great. And he said, well, you're going to have to pay for it. And she said, or I could just go home. 
which I thought was the greatest. She was like, you know, if I miss out on a weekend to see work, that's a, that's it is that's my awesome, loss. That's awesome because I would have just been like. Oh, I got to be like a guy. Right. I'll just take That's it. it. The guys would do it. I would do it. I'm not going to complain. Right. I would have folded too. And and I was telling my dad that. And my dad was commented about, he said, see, that's the right answer. That's the, that's she, that she was good. Take care of herself. Yeah. And uh, cause there's a bunch of uh, riots in Milwaukee this week. Oh yeah. And my dad was like, I know people who live up there. I got, I got black friends. He actually said, I have black <laughs> friends. And I was like, thank God, dad. Thank God you're My mom a- just started watching the wire. So she's about to have black friends. <laughs> That's that'll be as close as. How's your mom doing? Is she is she getting a new hip? What's uh, happening? In about a week and a half, she's having hip surgery. She's okay. getting a third replacement on the same hip. Good. I don't know how much a body can take. Not much more. I hope. Oh God! Um, Stop. <laughs> Well, did you do sets this week? Have you been doing sets? No, I took a whole week off after New York. It was very, you know, a lot of intense. sets. Yeah. And then I think 28 or 29. Oh, geez. And we, and I took my kid to every, every single show. There and he was. was he part, was great. Yeah, he was. And he would just sit and play Minecraft or whatever on, Headphones. The, on the iPad. Didn't hear a word. Um, and then the last set was in Bushwick on uh, on Saturday night, and I brought my kid to Bushwick. And uh, was, was that that, uh, that was that that uh, one on on Friday night that I was supposed to do? Oh, it was Friday night. Yes, yeah. How uh-huh. was that? It was fun because I ended up going to the Hamptons, but you you went. Yeah, up to it Bushwick. was fun. It was fun, and they were really cool. They let him sit in the very back. And oh, cool. Again, he just you know he's lost to the world. So uh, I do feel like oh, I'm raising a like a. A fucking nightclub kid, but then he—he's not, you know, he doesn't care. You're not where raising he is. Paulie you put... Shore. You're good. <laughs> That's my. <laughs> You're good. It's all right. Yeah. Paulie Shore is probably still in th- in therapy, trying to figure some shit out. Yeah. But if and... my son did become a club owner, I could get some spots. Oh I yeah, get it, ladies. I'll... What a coincidence! <laughs> I won't sleep with the Booker, but I'll have the Booker. Right, I'll give birth. To you'll him. give birth to Bookers. That's uh, <laughs> that's the new that's the new comedy model. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah it was it was good although i did you know there's a, a couple gigs where where they're not in clubs but in bars mm-hmm. where everyone is everyone's on their iphone and they do that thing where they're they have a smile plastered on their face while they're on their iphone so it looks like they're they do that <laughs> i'm paying attention i heard your joke right but it's it's fake and oh, it's yeah. as enraging as an actual heckle. Um, <laughs> but it seems to be acceptable in a bar. Now, in a nightclub, you could actually, because everyone paid a cover charge, yep. you can say, you can be a bitch and say, put that away. But when I was criticizing someone sitting at a bar, right? I, you know, I kind of came off as like, a jerk, an somehow. asshole, right? Like, yeah. can't you just be cool and let this person text fifteen right. feet from you? Right. Well, it's essentially like I will sometimes watch a movie while playing a video game on my phone. Yeah, and that's fine if there's two screens going. Yeah, but if one of those screens is a person, yeah, uh, put the other screen away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I always yeah. think of it as an indictment against my own cell phone usage because I'm constantly on the fucking thing. So. Yeah, I know. But but I do I completely understand and I'm trying I'm trying so hard to put it down. Yeah. So, so hard. But okay, so I f- we finish up and I we uh, my son and I uh, mm-hmm. and uh, we we. We go to Lake Tahoe last week. Oh yeah, and it was really fun. It, that, that I felt like, you know, I do. Did I do you go one swimming in Lake Tahoe and one for him? Oh yeah, is yeah, that yeah. What, is that what it is? Is it a is it a swimming lake? Well, every lake's a swimming lake. Where well, are you from? I'm from Lake Michigan, where okay. when I was a kid, it wasn't great to go swimming. My there grandfather was a-, was a lifeguard on Lake Mis- Michigan. Oh, was he? Yeah, where? I'll bring you a pic. My grandpa was hot. Super Fox. Yeah, in his lifeguard outfit, like yeah. the old like nineteen. Uh, sure. 40s, 1930s lifeguard outfit is really Excellent. cool. So, um, yeah, we just got, you know, dirty and <laughs> we went hiking. And it, it, there's nothing like seeing a boy scampering in the woods. <laughs> like, it, it made my heart explode. And oh. then he slept so hard every night. It right, because really you got great. to run around all day long. Yes. And I was like, what the, f- why don't I live in the woods? Like, if I was a good mother. <laughs> He would not this be in nightclubs at night. He would be living in the woods, trapping things. There's a things. recurring theme of almost every episode that we have ever recorded, which is, you know, if I were a good mother. <laughs> and you're like, no, you're a good mother. He's getting all the experiences. It's very beautiful. Well, and we went rock climbing. and um, Oh, wow. Yeah, there was uh, this guy, uh, 
he does, you know, it's like yeah. a he's, he's it's his new business, you know, and sure. so it's cheap. We got in on the ground floor, but he hooks us up to ropes and stuff. And then we start climbing, climbing up a rock. And it's it's terrifying because it you're like, terrifying. I'm I'm sticking out like the rock isn't it rock isn't indented. It's out dented. <laughs> right. And so I'm like, I'm I'm you're trying to hug. There's, a freaking... I'm hugging a round thing uh, 30 feet in the air and there's rock below me. And I'm like, I can't move. And, and he just kept going, trust your feet. You know, just one inch will change everything. Oh, wow. Which is a metaphor for stand right, up comedy life, whatever. Yeah. And then you do you, fi- <laughs> you find another feet. ledge mm-hmm. and you scooch over and then there's another one. And then you then you all of a sudden you're crawling again. It was really cool. That sounds amazing. Yeah. You, you know, one time uh, right after I did Last Comic Standing, I started for the first time in my life. I got stage fright and really? panic attacks. Yeah. Why? Um, because and or this is what I think is why is because that first season of Last Comic Standing, I had never had anyone uh, give a shit this much. So. Uh, last what do you coming, mean where they're pouring over your act and stuff? Uh, the camera's in your face. Oh, and there's, I see. And uh, there's uh, some sort of assistant produ- producer person in the background constantly asking you this question over and over again. What do you think's going to happen if you don't win? Oh. What do you think's going to happen if you don't win? Right. And the first 30 times they ask you, you yeah. say, well, I'm going to continue to do stand-up comedy, it turns out, because uh, <laughs> nobody can make me not do stand-up comedy. Yeah. But the 45th time, yes. the 60th time, uh, I would get twitchy. And so when I, I started d- double second guessing myself, I, it's, I will never forgive Last Comic Standing for this. I will never forget the reality television industry for giving me any kind of stage fright ever. Because previously I would just get nervous about new gigs yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I freaked out at a corporate. Wait, wait. Did you ever give an answer that got used that was like, I will cry, I will quit? I, no. Did you ever? No, okay. I, I, just well, I never folded. Just repetitive which, nature. Yeah. Well, which is that's what they were strange. trying to do. And that's why I never made the house. Yeah. It's because I never, I never, never said, oh, I'm, I think I'll kill myself. You got to have a, mm-hmm. yeah, you got to have a story. Right. I didn't have a good enough story. I was, that's what. Uh, you, hadn't, the, you hadn't watched reality TV show. You got to have a backstory. I think, I think Paige Hurwitz said to me, you're a little too sane. <laughs> To ever make the house. I'm so sorry. You're really funny. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so, but it was, uh, I was doing a corporate and I just sweat started pouring down and I, I forgot the next joke. Yeah. And so, but here's the thing is I finally figured out how to fight that back, which was I moved my feet. Oh. If I physically moved, my brain would then move again. Oh. So if you have stage fright, I recommend Dance. you uh, do a lateral move. Just to <laughs> give yourself start a step dancing, a, a dosy do. Get yourself in a square dance club and <laughs> and start uh, get that arm out. <laughs> but it was yeah, it was weird. I, and and since then, when when it when if it comes up again, I I know how to deal with it. Mm. But uh, do you? Because you you don't get you don't have that right. No, that sort I mean, of frozen it, panic just attack. When I first start like I did I did a set last night. Um, oh, did you? Re-entry into comedy after a week was, it was okay. It was yeah. Um, Where'd you go up? Last... Ka- Kyle was at uh, the town pizza place and I was at the York on, on York Avenue. Yeah, I know. Eagle you we two Eagle blocks. Rock kids. I get it, hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> I get yes. it. You're insiders. You it was me, Kyle, and Andy Kindler and Al Jackson. When you think of hipsters, <laughs> it's the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Monday, I did the Pikey. Oh right! How is that? That's right. That's coming here. Up. It's fun. It was no fun. Good. Yeah, it was fun. Brian Hennigan did a set. Yeah, yeah. Do you know him? I not offhand, but probably he. he <laughs> you do. He's Scottish. He he manages Doug Stanhope. And, okay. Um, he he like he got, did a set. Yeah, he's funny. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Um, and uh, he he. He had me. He helped me, or he was the reason I got to do Edinburgh, the oh. Edinburgh Festival ever. Wow! When did you do it? Oh, in two thousand. In 2004. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, th- I think, didn't I tell you this? No. How we, did you? We, he had a venue I called the Velvet Lounge, I think. Okay. And a really nice venue. And he had it for a month. And I got to do 10 days. And then uh, James Inman did 10 days. Oh, and wow. then Doug Stanhope finished out the month. So he did like 12 days or something <laughs> right. like that. This is like 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It was great. I would love to do it for a month. Would you? Yes. It was, uh, w- what if you had to flyer? 
No, right. I would not let you do that for, <laughs> for a, month. a minute. Right. It's like flyer for three hours every day no, and he, then go do it hour. You didn't. He took care of everything. That's, oh, that's what, It was so great. That's how I would like to do it. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't want the authentic experience. Of yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to build character. Or you fly anymore. your own show all day yep. and then you do an hour long show in front of four people that you talked to earlier in the day. Uh huh. Uh huh. I just did some show where I showed up and I was like, oh, this is character building. Uh, turns yeah. out I have plenty of character. It I don't never to, ends. It right. Never, there's always another gig where you're told where you are in the business. Right. <laughs> there's always so, something. Oh, so I was at the Viper Room last night. And, yeah. Uh, and Tammy, you know, Tammy Jo Deeren does Runs that Tuesday one, yeah. nights. It's really fun. And uh, it's weird. I, it's weird that the Viper Room does comedy. I just have such an image of it in my head of this dark place. That ought to have punk bands. Yeah, or, only. Or jo- yeah, right, yeah. Or Johnny or just Depp should shooting be working. Up. Yeah. Sh- just be shooting up when they River don't have Phoenix a Phoenix is going to come out of yeah. the bathroom. But it's a fun comedy place. Yeah, it's you know? perfect. And it's, um, and it's nice. really small. Yeah. So, uh, so Tammy said, you got to talk to this person. She's supposed to go up, but she's having a panic attack. And, oh, wow. And, uh, Did um, you talk her down? I guess she didn't want to go up like it would have been her second time on stage. And okay. She didn't want to go up in front of all these people. And she, the last second time. Second time on stage? The la- yeah, it was kind of like a. A ha- little bringer kind bringer-y. of thing? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this, the first time had been a while ago. Okay. And, uh, oh, it had been, oh, and I, too ju- long. I just said there's no. There's no good place to go through this. <laughs> you can you you right, can go there's through no it other now. way to you can sleep with the sound guy and get an extra minute at an open mic twenty five right. years ago. You could talk to Tammy, maybe you could sleep with her. And uh, maybe <laughs> she's, she's available. She is married. Um but it's it's uh there's no good way to go through it. The right. first year is gonna be really hard and painful. Right. That's I- it. And you could do it in front of 60 friends that came to see you, or you can do it at open mic in front of the other comics who are going next on, a, on their iPhones. Right. Looking at their shit. Yeah. I never. I was never nervous in the beginning. I should have been. I should have been ashamed. I should have been <laughs> nervous. I should have been a little more critical. Yeah. Nope. I'm like, oh, I am a genius. Let's do this again. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, You need to have a huge ego in the beginning, especially. Yeah, just to get over the hump. Yeah. Of because whatever. You're, you're usually, you're so bad and you, <laughs> and you want to be so good. You want to be so good. You can't. You can't actually comprehend how bad you are. <laughs> if you did, you would be. You'd be appalled. And right. You, you would be appalled, and you would never get back up. Yeah. Yeah. It is true. You got to have a giant ego, in the, and then hopefully it gets it gets tempered a little bit. You know, as yeah. as you get better and you realize, oh, I'm never going to be as great as Carlin or X or Y or Z. Then you're like, oh. Then you just see you kind of see who you really are, right? You know? and, well, and yeah, if, if you can let go of like the Richard Pryor thing, where yes. you're like, oh, I guess I'm not going to be Richard Pryor, right? Right? And right? And then you can be yourself, yeah. And that's all you have to do because yeah, it's all, all you can, can do. Mm-hmm. So, hey, do you want to do a comic of the week? Sure. It's uh, Debbie, Debbie Gutierrez. Gutierrez. Yeah, yeah. Who's Love Debbie? Yeah, she's been working. She's been working it like us. Yeah, and yep. she crushes. Oh, she destroys. You can if you're a booker, you just put her Find on stage. Debbie and then, Gutierrez and get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, you can just go home. <laughs> yeah, just you go. Just home. Give her the keys. You can lock yeah. up when you're done. T- that's your vacation weekend. Yeah, take off because uh, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's not gonna be anybody complaining about Jack. <laughs> They're yeah. just gonna say, "Oh, thank God we came to see comedy because yeah. Debbie Gutierrez is Kills. on stage." Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's really good. Check yeah. her out. And uh, I did a I did a a, a domestic abuse benefit with yeah. her uh, probably fifteen years ago. Yeah, and she used to do this bit about beating her kids. Yeah, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm still going to do that bit." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, in front of these people, and she said, "Yeah, yeah, they can take it." And uh, she's like, "I don't know, I'll think about it." And I was like, "You're not thinking about it. <laughs> You're just going to do it." I did a benefit once, um, and you know, a huge part of my act is about hating being a parent. <laughs> So the benefit was for <laughs> this. This is horrible. It was. It's horrible. I don't even know if it's horrible funny yet. Okay. Just warning you. Um, is it is it funnier than my buddy just changing clothes in his car and having to spend eleven grand and being considered a pedophile? Is that kind of funny? No. Okay. Go. Okay. So it's it's a benefit for uh, murdered children. Oh Jesus H Christ! Now and like there it's was- a benefit. For, <laughs> is it a survivors? I, I can't remember exactly. Let me get to the story. Okay. So uh, there's a very famous case. I'm not going to say the kid's name, but it's like maybe in the last 10 years. Where Larry. The, it wasn't Larry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. You just can't stop yourself. <laughs> Take a lock. Okay. So I'm, I'm done. 
after 30 years, you have no control. I'm riffing. We're on, we're on radio. We're doing a thing. So, this, I can't start this story in this seabed of laughter. Right. I'm heaven, not telling for, it. heaven for Fed. No, no. I had to go into the Kurt Metzger thing. You can fucking ch- suck it up. Don't, don't pretend equate that those is, things. You stepped you, in it yourself. Uh, pretend Let's that this not is bring a, it up. Let's, this is Let's, the preamble before. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. Pretend this is a super eight. Two minutes later, bring it up. Pretend this is a super eight and you got to man it up. Why don't you do that? Okay. So this child was snatched from a front yard, raped, mm-hmm. murdered. Ba- a baby. Like under eight years old. Okay. So uh, the parents of the child are at the comedy club. <laughs> and there is a eight by ten foot picture of the child. Jesus God. Uh, behind the stage. So it's like the backdrop. It's like the red curtain. And that's this benefit. And the comics have to perform in front of that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't approve. I don't approve of any of that setup. And I'm going to go up and complain about my kid. (laughs) That's what I'm going to do. Was this in the last year or two? No, no, no. Thank God. No. It's uh... it was early on when I really hated my kid. <laughs> when he was a baby, baby, and you're like, "What a pain in the ass this yes. kid is." Yeah. Oh my God, that's hilarious. It was the backdrop. Yeah, a it giant was like poster it was a gigantic. Size. And you know what? It, if I that was my kid, I would have. I would a locket. I would have posters everywhere. Oh, I'd be you? like, yeah, I'd be like, don't fucking forget this. Oh, there you go. How do you, how dare you be happy when I'm I <laughs> right? Let's suffer. bring it in. You would carry it into Applebee's it would be and Greek-like like put it up lamentations next to you the... wherever. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be one of those people that everyone hates that because they they right. lose sympathy for them because they won't shut up about it. You'd have a cutout and then you'd go out to TGI yeah. Fridays and you're like, hey, it's happy hour. I'm going to put this cutout on the stool next yes. to me. Of yeah, my while boy. you y'all you sit with your actual children. My child was taken from. Me. Oh, Jesus and I would, yeah, I would Christ. stare down everybody. Where's that TV show? There you go, you guys. It's the sitcom <laughs> pitch for Lori Gilmartin. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> At True TV, where are you? Um, <laughs> That's who would pick it up. <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh, by the way, you know, I bailed on one of these last sets in New York yeah. because I showed up. So early for the show, and it was a UCB set yeah. on Saturday night. I showed up at ten thirty for a midnight show. Why did you do that? Because the f- why I had- did you bail? That was your error. That was well, my error. Well, here's what happened. <laughs> right? Was- you don't fucking bail on a set. Uh, right. Well, you- first of all, you would be proud of me, and you would be the only one because uh, I turned down Hamilton tickets to take these two to take two sets on no. Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, it were was, they were they free Hamilton tickets? It was standing room. It was forty bucks, and oh the thing is, is God. I had just spent the entire week running around the f- burrows. Yeah, I was so freaking exhausted. I was yeah. like, I don't think I can stand for four hours. Oh my God! And then I had two sets at New York Comedy Club, which paid. And it's their fun sets, and they were so fun. Yeah, holy smokes! You know, Amy's booking that now. Yeah, and it was so fun. Yes, they were such. It was two fifteen minute sets. Yeah, and so I did them back to back, and I was psyched. And yeah, quite honestly, I and I felt I, I I do feel bad about the Hamilton in the standing room, but I just I was like, you know what? I don't know that I would have made the four hours because I was just so exhausted from the week. And and, and Lynn so, Lynn is not in them. Lynn Manuel no, is not. But I so I and I so I told the guy I was like. I'm so sorry. And he didn't even blink. He goes, turns out there's a line. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going to give that. It's going to take uh, me 12 seconds to get rid of that ticket. Yeah. So, but, uh, so I did those two sets at New York Comedy Club. Right. And then I started, and it was, remember in, in New York, it was 102 degrees with a humidity of 7 million percent. It was awful. I, it was so I, gross. <laughs> and I took the subway uh, almost all the time. I didn't Ugh. Uber, unless I was between spots where I had to yeah. get there quickly. I would take a cab or something, but. Oh, horrific. So gross. So hot. I, so I remember why people vac- uh, vacation away from New York. Yeah, why if they would can. you ever be Go in New to York New York in August? August. It's the worst. So, so, but I decide I'm going to walk to the UCB, which I'm, you know, the New York Comedy Club is somewhere like 24th and a 24th between 2nd Avenue. Between 2nd uh, and 1st. Okay. So, yeah. I, and I'm walking to 24th Avenue and 8th Avenue. Tw- 24th You're Street and 8th Avenue. You're walking to 26th, right? Isn't it yeah, 26? 26th and 8th Avenue. Yeah, it's a long walk. Right, but it's uh, a but, nice one. Right, but I thought it would take. Six avenues? I don't know. You forgot yeah. about Park, Mad, and Lex? No, I thought it would take 
I don't know, hours. I don't know what I oh, thought. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, I got oh, there so in you, like okay. 35 minutes. Sorry. And I go and I talk to the woman at the box office and she's like, well, we don't really let comics in before the show. And I was like, I can't just sit in the green room with my device and stare at it. And she's like, no, we don't really, we don't really do that. What? And I said, well, is there a coffee shop? It's 1030 at night, right? Well, you might be a rapist. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Uh, uh, they were, they were busy the- not letting uh, a guy that they are unwilling to tell anyone. Uh, so I I was like, is there a coffee shop around here? She said, there is. It's right kitty corner. Well, remember, it's 1030 at night. Yeah. That coffee shop's been closed for four fucking hours on 8th Avenue and 26th. Well, my outrage, why would a coffee shop close near Ever. Chelsea in Manhattan? Ever. Right. And so I and now so I wander around for a half an hour looking even for a bar that has decent lighting so I can write in my notebook. Yeah. And uh, so um and then there's nothing and there's a McDonald's right there. And I'm like, "Oh, fine. I'll just go get a nice coffee at McDonald's." And I walk in. It and I go, go to use the bathroom. So gross. And I am no neatnik. This is not a super. I was like, it's too foul. I can't. And I asked the woman. I was like, that that bathroom actually. Uh, someone threw up in the sink. I can't. Uh, I can't use that bathroom. And she goes. I said, there's another bathroom. It's locked. And she said, yeah, that's for us. Oh and I my said, god. Well, I'm just gonna use it to pee. Can I do that? And she goes, nope. And so I walk out of the ba- the McDonald's and I text the guy who booked me, who happens to be the guy who's under. Uh, oh shit yeah no. yeah oh my god and i was like hey man i didn't realize that when i it was the same i did a call back right it's a, and i said well <sighs> hey i i don't i i can't find anywhere to hang out for the next hour and they won't let me in early so i'm thinking of bailing because my flight's pretty early tomorrow morning and he doesn't respond and then i wait around to, to i was like unless you have a place where you think you have a suggestion of a bar that's relatively quiet around here and because i'd yelped and i couldn't find anything and so Fifteen minutes go by, and now it's uh, now it's like quarter to eleven or uh-huh. eleven o'clock. And I was like, "Okay, I'm calling it. I'm just going back to my hotel." And then he responded to me in the, like the middle of the night, uh, and he goes, "I yeah, no no worries, don't worry about it. I wasn't there." So, uh, but, but I felt bad cause I, I didn't want to bail on the set. I wanted yeah. to do the set, but it took me so much less time to cross goddamn Manhattan. Let's just investigate why you couldn't find something to do in New York city on a Saturday night. It's the city that never sleeps, but it turns out their coffee shops do. And, uh, it's bullshit. I was like, I can't, I, there wasn't even a diner. It felt like I was like, well, hello, 1987. Come back and visit me where there's a freaking diner where hmm. Woody Allen uh, would be there. I need the cross streets where this incident happened. I will investigate. Well, I'll tell you this. It was uh, it was 8th Avenue and 26th, right? Yeah. And right there. The coolest you know, thing. 9th is like. It's crawling with. Yes. Ah, restaurants crap. and stuff. Son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. One more avenue. <laughs> I don't know. You are like 15 blocks from Times Square. (laughs) Right. Well, and I get lost on numbered grid streets. I genuinely, there is a magnet next to the compass in my brain. So uh, (laughs) the, uh, um, but there is, in New York, they have these really cool like Wi-Fi. uh, They're like old phone booths, right? uh But it's just a Wi-Fi tower and Mm -hmm. it has, and there was a homeless guy with headphones plugged in listening to some music and dancing. Oh yeah, I saw that a lot too. And uh, and then another guy who was just plugging in his laptop sitting right next to it, uh, also at 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, I don't want to sit by these guys. <laughs> I don't want to go sit with my device by the other two dudes who are stinky magoos. I couldn't, I couldn't freaking handle it. Anyway, yeah. uh, what else is going on? What else is going on? I'm, uh, I have a little set tonight, which oh, is Wednesday you? night. Yeah. And then, um, uh, then I go to Seattle for the weekend. Oh, that's right. You're doing do some long are you doing... sets. That'll be sweet. I'm going Friday, to Chi- Saturday. Right. Five. I'm going to Chicago and Minneapolis this week. With Hold on. Yeah. I'm not done with my compelling story. <laughs> Five shows. Five shows. Staying in the condo. Are you staying in the condo? We've uh, had this conversation too many times. We'll for see me. how it goes. Again. Yeah. I might be out uh, on Friday or Thursday, Friday <laughs> morning if it's really bad. Just check in. Priceline something. Treat yourself right. You know how expensive Seattle is right now? It's This is the only month where it's decent to live in Seattle if you don't like rain. <laughs> this is it, right? It's, it's ridiculous. Clear and 300 beautiful. a night. 300 a night. Yep. Minimum, yeah. Right. The Airbnb is ridiculous. Uh-huh. I think you're worth it. But uh, you do whatever Dude, you need. How much do you think I'm making? Uh, I don't know. WGA? That's a... <laughs> 
Guild minimum on stand up comedy. Oh my God. I think you're making guild minimum on the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, that. And, uh, yeah. I think the rest of your life can supplement uh, a, a, a condo where guys have been jerking off for the last 12 years. And, and then nobody's got a black light. Don't bring a black light. Do you always travel with a black light? You and Monk? Uh, what? No. I, I have other references from the 90s if you want in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also channeling Kindler. Uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll see maybe someone panicked and lowered their prices this today. Yeah, yeah. Maybe last minute. One of those price line they'll do like express deals. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't know where they'll put you up. They could put me up near the airport. I want to if I'm I want to be near downtown Seattle so I can walk around. Okay. That's the half that's 90% of the reason I take this gig besides just being able to do time is just, Yeah. Be able to walk around Seattle by myself and just roam around. That's one of my favorite things to do. Well, then the price you pay is to stay at a condo. Because uh, do you spend the first day at the condo cleaning the condo? I no. spend the first day at the condo cleaning no. the condo. No, mm-hmm. I only uh, I only have toast. <laughs> you only have toast. I have do you bring your own sheets? You know, Tracy Ashley brings her own sheets. I should ask. I should find out what size the bed is and yeah. bring my own sheets. Yeah, or and your own pillow. She brings her own sheets and pillows. Doesn't she have to? She does, but does she have to pay extra to bring bring that on the plane? I mean, well, it's, that's like an extra has a bag. Good card. She has a, She probably has a good. Like I have the Delta card. I get three free bags. Oh yeah. And uh, you do? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I could. I could travel. So you with only fly Delta. Delta and Southwest, and Southwest you get two free bags anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I got uh, I got bumped up. I'm I'm bumped up on the tiniest of all dumb flights from uh, Chicago to Minneapolis. I'm bumped. Hello, 42 minutes of glory. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then Minneapolis to Milwaukee. I'm also bumped. Yep. 37 minutes of 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 luxury. The only the only uh, benefit to that is the is the alcohol, but you don't drink, right? Right, right. But if I did drink, I could have all the booze I wanted for 37 minutes. Do you think they have a list of sober? people they can bump up <laughs> Maybe. just to save money. Well, Why you would know, you bump up a known alcoholic if you, if you could br- bump right. up Jackie Cason? Exactly. You, yeah, it's, uh, Lewis Lee and I have, from Acme have had this conversation before, how much money he has saved since I stopped drinking. <laughs> He's like, no wonder I can raise your money. It's, uh, you used to cost me so much money in top shelf booze. Oh my God. Because Acme, you get free booze when you work. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, it was it's funny. a bad idea, is what it is. It's a t- it's a terrible business model. <laughs> he was. How comics, did their thing work out where the the parking lot was going to be converted? They're screwed. Oh, yeah. So it, uh, uh, he's looking into a new place. Um, no, yeah, seriously? but it'll take a year. It'll take a year for them to to move Acme. Do they not? So is the club going to shut down? No, he okay. says it will. He said, uh, b- b- he said, by God, there will not be one dark night, <laughs> and he's just going to smoothly move it. And um, wow, yeah. So he's just he's fi- trying to find a place that that has parking that is interested in having him, and he and he wants the good dank. You know, yeah. he needs the yeah, low yeah, yeah, ceiling. Yeah. He wants it to just two twenty. He's got a great place. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm. I'm. I'm home. This will drop. I'll. Next week, I don't even know what gigs I'm doing. Go to at Jackie Cation, you guys. Just look for me. How, just in general, as people gravitate to the city, raising housing prices dramatically. Bastards. And this is affecting uh, a comedy club because now they're they're putting up condos in an area that wasn't yeah. wasn't terrific once at one point. But the comedy club is one of the reasons it became a better area. Yep. You know, I'm going to Seattle this weekend. People can't. You know, the the hotel prices are three hundred per night even on a thursday yeah how unless you already like how are how are people going to be able to keep bringing comics in to to cities well luckily you know um you know comics um costs have never increased (laughs) since the 80s since the late 80s why would you ever raise the money the comics ever is actually costing you more than the comic oh my god it probably is yeah yeah, for sure. And but uh, like like San Francisco, for example, it's yeah. so expensive to put comedians up in San Francisco. Yeah. It's, so now, so now the ins- the you know, it's like, well, you better bring in somebody who's a huge draw to offset all the costs. Right. You know, I, I'm doing a weird one nighter run. I'm doing Walnut Creek. I'm going to do that pool hall in Walnut Creek. Oh my God! You know, Masses. Yeah. <sighs> You talk about building character, but uh, I just I need to run as many long sets before yeah. December, and uh, so I think I'm doing Throckmorton. Uh-huh. Uh, that'll be sort of the money oh, gig, nice. and Doc's Lab, and then um, and uh, and then Walnut Creek, and then something else up in Oakland. Yeah, I'm doing four or five nights, and and I, two of those have hotel, 
yeah. and the other three do not. And I said, yeah, you got to – and the guy who's helping me book it, I said, you got to find me a hotel those other three nights. And he's like, what? And I said, yeah, either that or tell me you're paying me $1,000 less than you are. See if I'm still willing to do it and take that $1,000 and get me a damn hotel. And he's like, done, uh, working on it. So there you go. I wish I had your balls. Well, I keep them in a little, little. It's a, it's a, it's a box. It's a Chinese <laughs> box that I like to keep. Those Benoit balls. <laughs> and I just uh, think people be like, "All right, well, bye." Not interested. Is that what you'd say? No, I think oh. that that's that's, oh, what, that's they what, say. what they if would I say. If I gave an ultimatum, yeah, they would go, "Okay, see you later." Well, the thing it's, I think if it were your only source of income, right, you would stand up for yourself. True. More. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it was, and yes. so that's what I. Do. I am grateful for anyone that could work around my schedule. Right. Yes. Right. So that's, that's and that's where that gratitude comes. Yes. And then you're like, no, I get it. I get it. No, I'm totally there. And yeah. You're like, I appreciate it. And so, but me, I'm like. No, I'm I'm making an effort to come yes. there. We're in this together. We're yeah. in the trenches together. Let's yeah. figure out how I will take less money and have more comfort because yeah. uh, I have to stare myself in the face. You know, I stayed in New York uh, in that Hampton Inn. No, no tub. And Jackie Cation bathes. Me and the Japanese. We only bathe. <laughs> you, you... <laughs> I only bathe. Me and the entire country of Japan. You know, when I, I went to Japan uh, a couple yeah. years ago on vacation, yeah. and uh, they they have these tubs that are shaped like cubes. They're not they're not rectangles. They're squares Boxes? and they're high squares. Yes. So when you sit in it, the the <laughs> top of the the top of the ceramic part is like at your neck. Yeah. And I immediately, of course, filled the tub up to my neck, <laughs> and um, and then I was like. It would be so easy for me to drown right now, because because I I feel and I also like to scorch in a tub. I like my oh, skin yeah. to be red. Yeah, yeah. So I it was hot and I was feeling woozy and I'm like I could I could pass out and drown and I'm in a strange person's Airbnb in Tokyo mm-hmm. in their mm-hmm. in their bathtub. Nobody knows I'm here. This right. is scary. And, and then, then I got out and never did it again. Oh my god. No. First of all, it's harder to drown than you think, especially if you know how to swim. And it turns out you do. <laughs> so second of all, uh, yeah. I uh I did you ever read Jitterbug Perfume Tom Robbins? No, uh-uh. Tom Robbins. I, I went through a Tom Robbins phase, yeah. but I didn't read that one. He wrote that one with the thumb. Yes. I never liked the thumb yeah. one. I uh, liked Jitterbug it. Perfume was really good. You like the thumb one? Yeah. I, I I'm saving the last of them. Seven the Seven Veils I think was the last uh one that I read and it was great. It was yeah. about a Palestinian and an Israeli who were best friends. Mm. Anyway, it was very adorable. Mm-hmm. And uh, but Jitterbug Perfume was, has this theory about the fountain of youth is taking super hot baths, and I read it in college hmm. and ever since then i only take baths it even blo- in this drought yeah uh, other people take 20 minute showers i take a bath what yeah not me well i don't know i, I wet down i turn off the water that's because you're in the up. army yes <laughs> <laughs> You're like, get in there, maggot! Get out! Rinse off! Very irresponsible. And you're very responsible. I read. I'm reading. I just finished last night. Um, the Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. Have oh, you yeah. heard of it? I've heard of it. Uh, I can loan it to you if you want. Is it good? It's. Uh, Was it magical? It's about. Um, please, can Larry? You want to throw that in too? <laughs> Jesus. Um, so it's, it's, she's a, do you know who she is? She's like kind of a famous writer and she was, she's part of the, the group of people that sort of made California sort of, uh, cool in a way okay. and not cheesy when she was writing in the sixties and seventies oh, okay. about California. Uh, I haven't read a lot of her. She's one of those people I'm like, Oh, I should read her, but I haven't read a lot of her. When she did she this, write this? She wrote a book. She wrote a, a kind of like a landmark series of essays called slouching, slouching towards Bethlehem, which okay. I have, but I've heard read. of it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Same thing. Okay. So I, so she wrote it. Her husband, um, they were married for 40 years, died of a heart attack while they were sitting down to dinner. And Oof. so she wrote a, a book, a, a, a memoir about that year of grief, the first year of grief after losing your spouse. And okay. And it's really good. It's, yeah. I recommend it. Okay. You know, it was, it was a good Lake Tahoe read. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> My so kid around. was on the beach <laughs> picking up crawdaddies and showing her to me and trying to get me to touch them. I was reading, but she had like, she, okay. So her husband dies and then within, uh, a year and a half of that, her only child died too. Oof. Uh, and so she wrote another memoir about that called Blue Nights, which I think I might read next. Um, awesome. But it, she, she's a, she's, <laughs> she engages in metaphor and all these sort of strange sort of riffs. So it's not like a, 
it's not, you know, a by the numbers metaphor uh, memoir. This happened to me. Then this happened to me. Then I felt this. They, it's it. It kind of like breathes in and out. So it's oh, it's wow. not. It's good. I, I found yeah. it a good read. It's it's not. You got to cry now. It's like yeah, if you want to, you can. Or this might remind you of something else, but right. it doesn't. It's not trying to force you to feel anything. I love that. I love that description. It breathes in and out. That's yeah. amazing. And uh, yeah, I. Uh, it does sound depressing though. It is a little depressing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good, well, I, you are working on yeah. some grief stuff, right? Yeah. For your act. Oh, for so. my act. So it might be something. Yeah. It, but it just reminded me, Bamford will sometimes call me up and go, oh man, I saw this amazing documentary just about the, the Sudanese uh, children that get, st-. and I was like, stop talking. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm never watching that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and see, I, and, but it's. I'm going to talk about comedy for a second. Okay. Um, I did a thing where I sent out avails for L.A. gigs. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I have a list of like yeah. all the Monday night gigs. And then I stopped, of course, sadly. But yeah. uh, I've like there's there's four different places that I know that do sets on Mondays. And yeah. so I just send it like regular avails, like looking for work avails. Yeah. Except for that for fun gigs around L.A. Yeah. Like Hot Tub and, and all the all the kind of cool kids stuff where I'm yeah. like, hey, you guys, these are my Mondays that are available out into October. And weirdly enough, uh, it worked because uh, it turns out booking a comedy club, uh, whether or not – there's a great deal of money involved or not, is a job. And giving someone the option of avails will get you uh, work. That's smart. I always think, oh, I never, smart- I've never done hot tub. I'm like, oh, because they secretly hate me. Uh, no, did you ever send your avails? No. There you go. It's, so you're right. You're right. They probably hate you or they don't know when you're available. <laughs> One of those two things is probably happening. Uh. And so I recommend to everybody out there, uh, send avails to people. Just go, oh, that's a Tuesday make, night gig. Make it easier. Yeah, make yeah. it easier to get yourself in a cool kid gig. You know, the meltdown. Mm-hmm. I send Emily my avails months out, and then she uh, is overbooked and then uh, ignores those three. And then uh, <laughs> and then I send them again. Three months later, I'm like, what about these three patches of Wednesdays? <laughs> and she's like, maybe. And then I keep doing that until I get a gig. Cool. So I mean, it's just a it's a it's a shrewd idea. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is, is so this week's Dork Forest is with Karen Rontowski. Yeah. And she talked about tarot cards. Yeah. And uh, she read my tarot cards on the Dork Forest. How how, how we looking, girl? Uh, I need to go to the dentist. <laughs> Did you know the tarot cards will tell you to go to the dentist? No. <laughs> and made me laugh so hard. And what I love about Rontowski, because she's super paranormal, ghosts and, yeah. and tarot cards, and let's rattle the bones and look at the moon and see what the fuck, you know, her dog whisperer is saying to her yeah. dog from 3,000 miles away. And um, she is available uh, to both celebrate that. And mock it, <laughs> and which is I think because she's a comic, yeah, you know, and she's like, yes, tarot cards, they're hilarious. Yeah, in other news, they're correct. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, I have. Uh, since we're we've gone on to medical news, yeah, this isn't news. I have an eye appointment. Okay, after <laughs> this, good. I I don't remember this being the case before. I used to get contacts. Like I used to. I used to uh, get like years worth of contacts and then yeah. never talk to the eye doctor. And I got to go in, like they monitor my contact usage as if they're, they have street value. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> right. Like it's I'm Vicodin. Like, I go, I need more left ones. Well, what do you mean? Do, you're on a one a month. And I go, well, I don't know. I lost some. I ripped some. I travel. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're gone. And she, she couldn't. She couldn't parse. She couldn't understand why that would happen to why anyone would do that. It was what? so now I got to go in and it's just and it, strange, it, right? Just, it seems like yeah, that seems super strange. Thanks. Is that a way to nickel and dime you? Yeah, I oh. don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. I'm like, why do I have to keep coming in to get new? My eyes are the same. I, I'm not complaining. There's no blur. You know, right. I just need new ones. Yeah, that's well. it. Well, do you know? Oh, and Rontowski told me she was doing these uh, these old people gigs. Yeah, in Florida, she's doing old folks homes. Oh, there's like yeah, a, there's a network. That's there's like good a money. Mecca. Yeah, for yes, old folk homes. Yes, yes. Where get me in? Okay, uh, get me uh, in the home first. Well, <laughs> and then the gig. <laughs> well, she was saying that she was doing it with somebody, and um, and they were having a hard time doing the sets. But she's done so many of them. Yeah. One, she called me probably three or four years ago from doing a twenty-two. It was like colleges. Oh my! She was God. doing twenty-two age no, aging homes that's in awesome. Florida <laughs> in a row. She came back with like. 25 30 grand or something well, isn't like that. It, isn't it great where 
if you're a comic, like maybe you'll be famous. We all we all want to be Schumer famous, <laughs> right? But if you're not, you could still there's work. work. There's always work at yeah. some point. You'll you can always be a stand up comedian. Yes, you if, can. If that's all you end up being, right? That is the coolest thing. Then you win. Yes, it's a win. Yeah. So, but it, when she did that 22 week run, she's that's never done that many. 22 again. night, right? 20 22 night. Yeah. Oh, that's great. She she was like beside herself she said i <laughs> this might be the death of me this 22 weeks with these old people who nights she's 22 nights yeah 22 shows of of, of these old people and she said like she's probably six six weeks into it right because it was six nights into it but it was it was weeks long it was it was so long it might yeah. have been six weeks total actually okay. Okay. where there were some dark nights okay. in between or something okay. but she went and she bought a joke book Oh my God! And when you she would what? get mad you get at the, the audience, job done. you get yeah, the job done. That's it. That was her. That was you her. Do the job. She D Y J. Do your job. <laughs> she got. She would get so mad. She would be like, "Fine, here we go." <laughs> and, and then she would read a joke, and they would laugh and oh, laugh that's and laugh. Great. And she took the time to like scroll, like scroll through the jokes to find something. That they might not have heard before, you but know, it was a joke. It's joke. just a di- you, when you're doing colleges, and I haven't yeah. done college in a while, but you're going to write certain material mm-hmm. or come up with certain yep. material that they get. Yeah. Same thing with corporates. Uh-huh. Old people, same thing. It's part of your job. Is to, <laughs> if you're getting paid decent money to change right. change things up a little bit. Right. That's what the money's for. As you, yes. like, as you as you pointed out, it's an excellent point is that that's what they're paying for. Yeah. They're paying for you to be flexible enough to make it work for the 300 yeah. old people that yeah, are Yeah. Change your reference you. to Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, All right. Mel it's, Torme. Dude, where are we at? We're at an hour. Exactly. Me. What? Yes. Look what we did it. Never again this early. You could have stopped this, Kyle, by saying you weren't available at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday. But then no. we would have had to go to the first five that we did. Remember those? Yeah. We don't want to do that. No. I like that you have your bag. You're like, <laughs> look at this I have crap. My I have to my, my car keys out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, uh, what's your, uh, what do you want to tell What do you want to Okay, so... Um, when this drops, it'll be Monday, and that Saturday, I'm going to be working in Napa, California, at a theater. I'll I'll be tweeting about it incessantly, but at come come out and see me. That might 16. be the only time in the Bay Area for a while because it's so expensive to put comics <laughs> up there now. And I'm not thank you. I'm not famous enough to uh, that's it demand the Mark Hopkins. To, wow, who's Mark Hopkins? It's a for a 25 star hotel in San Francisco. Oh, that's the fanciest I'm sure, of all. I'm sure your Dana Carvey's would stay at the Mark Hopkins if oh, they wow. wanted to, etc. Right. How long does it take to get used to a five star hotel? Just the once, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm at Jackie Cation on Twitter and Snapchat and all the things. Okay, bye. Now leaving Nerdist.com. 